Here is a quick timeline that some of you may find interesting. As you all know, China and the Philippines have had several skirmishes over the last few months uh, because of the Sierra Madre ship that was run aground illegally on a disputed shoal, the Second Thomas Shoal, which was run aground by the Philippines in 1999. Several Filipino presidents uh, from there on promised to remove it, but that has never happened, even until today. Now, the shoal and other islands are part of a disputed territory. China claims them as theirs. Philippines does the same. Now, a few years ago, an international court of arbitration granted Philippines right to exploit waters around the islands, what is called an EEZ. The tribunal does not see that success on these submissions would have an effect on the Philippines' sovereignty claims. And so that that territory is the sovereign territory of the Philippines. Burns knows this. He knows it's not about sovereignty, but he lies to you. The grant specifically states that it does not settle sovereignty over the islands. You're going to hear this again and again by Filipinos, but here is the verdict itself. Watch here. So don't let anybody fool you. This is not about sovereignty, okay? Now, while the Philippines has right over these resources, other countries still have the right to navigate through the EEZ and fly over it as well. So while this dispute has a long history, it was never really a big problem until Bongbong Marcos became president. Since then, he has tried now to expand and build barracks around the Sierra Madre. Philippines fishing vessels and Philippines Coast Guard ships have been confronted by China's Coast Guard when trying to supply construction materials. Some of the techniques uh, have included using water cannons and diversion maneuvers at sea. Now, in one of those situations, a Filipino sailor lost a finger when two uh, inflatable ships collided. Now, in response to this unfortunate event last month, a provisional agreement was agreed by the Philippines and China to de-escalate the situation in the South China Sea and manage their differences through dialogue and consultation. This meant an agreement on rotation and resupply missions, or R-O-R-E, RORES, in the shoal in coordination with China. On July 27th, the Philippines completed a resupply unimpeded with the agreement being lauded by the United States. However, three days later, July 30th, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Manila to give Bongbong bon Marcos $500 million that nobody knows who is going to oversee. And they informed the world that the U.S. would station, tr uh, station troops and missiles on Filipino military bases, the old ones and four new ones that were agreed when Bombo Marcos was in Washington uh, a few months back. Now, fast forward to August 8th, and we had the fighter jets incident, the one we discussed on this video right here, where I pointed out, as can be seen here, that deployment of flares seems to be okay when Taiwan welcomes its Olympic team. That's the first thing to notice. But more importantly, releasing flares is not the first step in a protocol to redirect an aircraft. The simple hard fact is that the pilots of the Filipino plane chose not to abide those communications given to them, and the flares were just the next step. It's that simple. Now, August 19th, we see the world reporting on a collision between Coast Guard ships in the early morning of that day. China has released a video of communication with the Philippine Coast Guard telling them how to maneuver and operate in order to avoid a collision. Something called call regs or um, collision regulations that are set to avoid collisions. And these are set by the United Nations, by the way. Now, I find two things that are interesting. There is a screenshot of regulation number 15 of said regulations that states that the ship, and I'm going to keep it in layman's term, the ship to your right when you are on a similar heading has the right of way. In the videos that we see uh, on that night vision camera, the Philippine Coast Guard has 
the Chinese vessel to its right, meaning that the Chinese vessel has the right of way. That means that the Philippine vessel must change course, adjust the speed because they do not have the right of way. It's that simple. So if we follow the information on this screenshot of this Rule 15, it is clear that the collision falls on Philippines' responsibility, similar to the situation with the flares. They failed to follow safety procedures indicated to them. Now, what some people have pointed out is that later that morning, after dawn, journalists appeared to be seen on board the Philippine ship with professional camera equipment. Was it deliberate then? just to capture some images and shots that are going to make China look bad. I'm going to let you be the judge of that. You let me know in the comment section what you think that was. But we have all seen in the past CNN and other U.S. media on board planes uh, that are meeting Amer um, Chinese uh, Air Force before. And regarding the flares incidents, it seems to have been dragged long enough so that the uh, mobile phone video could have been made um, about this detour maneuver. But here is a real intriguing part. This is where I, I don't know. I went on the UN website looking for uh, call reg rule 15. And guess what I found? Nothing. When you scroll through the site to the page, both rule 15 and 16, which are supposed to discuss who has the right of way, are not there. I looked through the website and searched through the amendments at the bottom of the page, nothing on Rule 15. The one I saw, the screenshot demonstrating that it was Philippines' fault. That's not there anymore. Why? So I have two questions now. One, obviously, why is Rule 15 deleted from the UN website? And two, where did these incidents happen? Both the one with the jets and the ones with the vessels, because one side argues the encounters took in one set of coordinates and the others, they say they took in a different set of coordinates. So I do not have that answer, but I do have something between these two years. China and the Philippines had agreed to calm things down. Soon after that, there was a resupply operation that went uneventful. But soon after that, Americans come bringing money and weapons and two completely avoidable situations, two false flag, I must say, happen. Locally in the Philippines, many are calling for Bombong Marcos to do a follicle test since there are now accusations of him using drugs, a simple test that would dispel all rumors, but Marco refuses to accept. Is the Philippine being led by a drug addict? That is a risky, risky proposition and is something for the F Filipinos to find out by themselves. But for the rest of us, all we've got is the correlation between the Americans visiting Marcos and two false flag occurring. That's indisputable. Nobody, nobody wants a war. All right, friends, that's all the time for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content of my channel, consider subscribing. If you want to uh, support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee or use the QR code here on the screen. If you're in China, using WeChat. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.